Ja, hi again. I am Chris de Riedemar, the founder of EDCON Inc. in Raleigh, North Carolina, United States. Today I'd like to talk about, about the measurements like wrench time and hands-on tools time. The definitions of these concepts are that people are busy doing the work, working with their tools. And hands-on tools time is actually measuring time people have on tools or material. And then you like to get that up to as high as possible. Those of you who knows me before and heard me speak at a number of places, you know that I am opposing many writers, speakers and other consultants because I do not think wrench time is the right thing to do. Many talk about it, many write about wrench time, but very few use it in practice because to measure it is very intrusive and very intimidating and uh, if you take the example of a, a control system tech for example they might spend 90% of their time troubleshooting finding out what's wrong and then to fix the problem would be 10% of their time when they actually use their tools in the other part they are thinking and uh, that wouldn't count then well there are many other things it's complicated to do it and why do I not like this? Because you let busy time override productive time. You focus much more on keep people busy than they are productive, but that's not true. Because people can only be productive if they actually work on the right things. And if you have a breakdown situation, for example, yeah, people have to work on fixing that. And they might have a lot of branch time because you have to get people there, they have tools, they start disassembling, they start bringing rigging, they are really busy working with that. And if that's a high percentage of your time in a, in a maintenance organization that you have breakdowns, well, you might have actually a lot of wrench time. When you have a shutdown, most organizations are quite good at that. Because in a shutdown, People normally work, hopefully, on the right thing. They have the tools, they have the parts, and they are not interrupted very often when they do that because you need to get equipment running again. And I talk about the scheduled shutdown, of course. Well, why is it so? Because work is planned and scheduled, which is seldom is really in a daily operation where you have um, daily work or routine work, where you can find out in the branch time study that was done here. By, uh, so, so in an article where about 21% of their time was looking for parts, looking for tools, 14%, equipment not ready, 12%, finding documentation, 8%, waiting lockout and permit, 14%, waiting instructions was 4%, 14% was waiting on the craft, like a mechanic waiting for the electricians to disconnect and connect, and then doing the work only 14%. So what are you going to do about this? Do two things to fix this. In the first case, fix the work management system, including planning and scheduling. Again, Deming said that no one can be more productive than the system they work in. So fix that system, because almost, I would say 90% of all this goes back to that work was not planned, it wasn't scheduled for those people. So that's what they had to do. Okay, so what would you like your organization to work on then? Well, let's look at the other chart. And that is a chart I have used in the late 60s. And as I tell many times, nothing is really new in this business of how you manage maintenance. And in, in this case, we defined maintenance, and still define maintenance this way, that part of it is corrective maintenance. That is all maintenance done to correct a failure, hopefully, or in the worst case, a breakdown. Preventive maintenance is all program maintenance. It's repetitive, and it's done to prevent failures or breakdowns, like with lubrication, precision alignment, how you operate equipment, and so many other things. And also to detect failures early, so that you can plan and schedule work. You get your time to plan and schedule work. And there you have the condition monitoring, everything from look, list, and feel, smell, to, to condition monitoring tools, and online sensors, and many other technologies you have today. And part of it is continuous improvement, and that's not just a buzzword for us. Continuous improvement is root cause problem elimination. It is to, uh, to design out maintenance, 
it is to design for maintainability and to design for reliability. To design for maintainability and to design for reliability is something people should be involved with very early on during a specification phase of the new equipment. And in a world-class organization, the best organizations we ever found, and they're not many, but the absolute outstanding world-class organizations we found, they spend about 70% of their time on correct maintenance. And that is built up by 10% only scheduled or breaking work. That's what you don't want. You don't want to have only scheduled work where your people say go out and do this but the work is not planned. And 60% is planned and scheduled or only planned. And then you look at preventive maintenance that might be 10% because you have optimized it. You have optimized this, you have online sensors, you have operators involved in this and you put the frequencies right and you don't have duplications of PMs and so forth and so forth. And then you have freed up time, so about up to 20. Even I've seen 30% of the time is on continuous improvement. Craftspeople are involved in root cause problem elimination and the solutions to continuously improve. So what you have done, if you do this and you focus more on what use time is used on and where you have the most value added time than just keeping people busy, well, you have changed your organization from a do organization to a think and do organization. Do that. Thank you. And you can read more about this in my book, Knocking Bolts. Thank you.